Good morning, Business Athlete Nation. Hey, I almost slept in today. <laughs> I have a confession. Nicole will be joining us here in a second. Vincent Valentine. Yeah, creator. AI girlfriend this morning. We're going to talk AI girlfriends, AI stuff. Andy Booth is going to join us as well. Vincent's business partner will join us later on in the conversation. So I, I, I encourage you to stick around for, I know it's going to be an, an interesting conversation. You know, I love this AI stuff. Listen, it's, it's the platform for how we're creating stuff here in the Business Athlete Performance Lab. As a matter of fact, you did have on the agenda today. Perhaps today is not today to talk about it, which is all the tools we're using to build this, this company, this platform, these, this content. I'm all in, frankly, all in. I'll give you a little secret. Some of you lie like me or not, but every decision I'm making here is AI first supported by human second. I just, I, I, I think it's an inevitable way. Good morning, Nicole Bernard. Good morning. I think it's an inevitable way to think about businesses in the future is just rethinking how we start them. And I'm not saying there's not a room for humans. That's not what I'm saying at all. Nope. Not, uh, not what old Uncle Keith is suggesting. I'm just saying that maybe there's a way to think about things of new processes, new workflows, AI first, supported by human beings, new kind of jobs. So just the way I'm thinking about things here in the lab as we're building out the show. Hey, Nicole, so as you were jumping in, I had a confession. Nice music to bring the confession up here. I might have almost slept in today. Me too. I was... I, I only got home a few hours ago, being truthful, as I told you, as I was texting you, True. coming home from Carter's hockey game. My son played in the finals of his hockey tournament and they lost. So they're, they're in a, they're in a different, so they're in the regionals championships that are happening here in Winnipeg, Canada here next week. So that's, so the first part of their season ended, but this, it continues, but yeah, it was late, it was late night and I had some work to do when I got home to prepare for this morning, these morning show commitments. So if you're noticing a little morning voice, hey, got that cup of coffee. Yeah. What's going on with you? Not a whole lot. I was trying to get us live on Instagram. Yeah. Not a, not a whole lot. No. How was your day yesterday? Uh, it was great. Yeah. It's funny having, like I said yesterday, having the kids home, it just totally throws, throws the day off, but it's been really fun. Like it's been a blast. So yeah, we're again, still just preparing for this exchange student coming in. Yeah. Had a few work meetings. So yeah, that kind of stuff. Nothing super exciting. Just spring break life in the Bernard house. Yep. It's a lot of spring cleaning. A that... different pace. Yes. It is a different yeah. pace. Yeah. 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 It was, it was an active day here in the lab. I had a wonderful conversation yesterday at, on Live in the Lab with, with my guest, Pierre Butler. Yeah. Alicia, sorry. Alicia Pierre Butler. She was, we had a fantastic chat. It was funny. It was humorous. She was engaging. And we talked yesterday, Nicole, about some things that are, that are, I, I know everyone pays attention to, but the, the importance of operational infrastructure in your business. Yeah. Not the sexiest or most fun thing to talk about, but so necessary. It's true. Yeah. Not the sexiest thing to talk about. I know that when I went through the journey of exiting, uh, you know, ICUC, that those operational I's being dotted and those T's being crossed. Yeah. That was all the value in the business, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. They recognized in the operator that there was some neurosis happening. And if, if they're going to operate this way, then maybe the rest of it's going to be pretty buttoned. So when they went to, as Alicia said, open up the kimono, they're like, okay, yeah. And, and then we also talked to Nicole yesterday. And I think this is something that entrepreneurs have a balance with is the importance of sales, not losing track of operations and then operations not losing track of the importance of sales and what's more important is it operationally running the business or is it sales running the business is that both both and great answer yeah and, and exactly it isn't it mm -hmm. with maybe with maybe the slight edge to sales yeah but, but it's that fine razor's edge it's the fine razor's edge and i think those that succeed at this can really juggle that more or less kind of list, right? Okay, I got to do more of this, less of this. And if you balance that, you got yourself a nice little business running. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think in my experience, when you're maybe building a pizza company and you get good at making the pizza, you get confident in making the pizza, you lose track of sales or, then, or vice versa. And one thing happens to another. So yeah, totally. So that's, yeah, so that was, that was interesting part of things happening yesterday. Coming up here in a few moments, Vincent Valentine joining myself, Nicole, 
Bernard here, Mornings in the Lab. Today, I have a guest, a gentleman who drinks beer for a living. The best job ever. <laughs> right? Yeah. So his name is, I have it here in front of me, it is Craig Thorne. And he is part of uh, Beer and Others, the Bales podcast. So I think we're going to talk beers. He's made a career, Nicole, I suspect, by and he's done some really cool shit. He's been around since uh, TwitPick and MySpace and yeah. done some stuff in the early days of social media. And now yeah. he travels around, has a really cool podcast, drinks beer, rates beer, talks about it. Awesome. It's the good example of pick a niche. Mm-hmm. Like we talked yesterday in the show, right? Maximize that niche, go talk about it, and off to the races. Yeah, totally. So that's coming up today, live in the lab at noon with myself and Craig Thorne, which we'll talk beer, how he built the beer business, talking about beer. And for entrepreneurs thinking about niching out, probably a good discussion to perhaps tune into and, and see what things are happening. Mm-hmm. I also had an interesting conversation with some business folks yesterday, Nicole Bernard, about this whole... Yes, how'd that it's, go? It was really fascinating because there's this, as I like to say, building in the open, really learning how to create a live show, use tools to post produce it, exit it, and then chop it up and distribute it within mere minutes of creating the show live. It's amazing. It is, yeah. And it, you look at legacy live programs, it, it typically takes a long time for them to post process and because the legacy processes and we both know once you've put something in place and you, you've been doing it the same way for a long time it's hard to undo a legacy process yeah totally using today especially with ai they're only going to get better so when i'm building this when i'm building the platform here in the business athlete performance lab nicole and this, this media company to create content distribute content build audience i'm really thinking from the ways of how can we create this stuff uh, effectively, efficiently using AI tools and humans, uh, looking at the models that we're using in the past, but just rethinking it through the lens of, of, of today's technology. Mm -hmm. right. Hence, I'm really excited to talk to uh, Vincent Valentine today, who, who mm -hmm. when you look at their website, Creative AI, look at some, have you seen their website? Before, mm -hmm. before we bring Vincent on, I'm going to check, I'm, I'm going to pull it up here on the screen. I had it set up in my browser reset earlier. I, I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up here. It was, uh, I had it. Oh my God. I lost it. There it is. This is great live. So it's funny, right? When you're teaching people, this is great live entertaining content when the host just pauses and can't figure it out live on the air on mornings in the lab. Okay. So we're going to, I want to just quickly show you guys where we're coming from today before we invite in Vincent Valentine, who's coming to us from cognitive AI. So check this out, Nicole. So the genesis of, Cog so they started in 2023 during the during the boom in generative ai realizing quickly that they could match the expertise in digital asset space with impactful solutions that could help people all over the world streamline processes and multiple verticals so when you look at some of the things that they're doing it's pretty cool they're they got a arts.ai aiming to do a, gr a groundbreaking social media platform they have sound.home.ai real estate and then i think we're here to talk plenty about girlfriend.ai Although I, I am curious about all these different AI services and what it actually means. 3D blueprint, right? Is it a marketing platform? Is it a services? So I'm curious. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to talk with uh, Vincent coming up here about AI.com. And then if you look here, we stand out in the marketplace. We're using generic and highly relevant .ai domains, making it easier for our consumers to navigate to our products. Love it. Mm -hmm. There's some smartness happening here behind the scenes here at uh, Cognitive AI. So I'm excited to talk about this with Vincent Valentine today, as well as uh, Andy Booth. Cognitive AI. Cool. Okay, so let's do that. Let's let's pause for a moment. I'm going to set up set up Vincent Valentine. Nicole, we will come back here in a minute. I'm going to remove this here. Boom. And Vincent, we're going to queue you up to bring you up in a minute. Nicole, we're back in one minute, okay? Okay. Oh. Oh, can't hear you, Keith. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, of course you can't hear me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Vincent Valentine. Good morning, Nicole Bernard. We are back. Mornings in the lab. Having a, hey, Uncle Keith's a little bit sleepy this morning. He only got a few hours of sleep. He's on his Nicole. I only do three cups of coffee, and I'm yeah. <laughs> Vince, where are you joining us from today? We're from uh, sunny Barcelona in Spain. Oh, oh. 
sunny. It is. It was a little overcast behind you. Looks like maybe no. Yeah, it's been. It's the start of spring, so it's sometimes rainy, sunny. But yeah, it's gearing up to the summer now. That's fantastic. So thanks for joining myself and Nicole today to talk about girlfriend.ai, cognitive.ai. Before we get into girlfriend.ai, let's let's just dig let's just jump right into the business of cognitive AI itself. You look at the business, you look at the platform, but maybe before we even go there, let's get the audience to care a little bit about Vincent and Andy and the crew behind the scenes. Why should people pay attention to what we're going to say next, Vince? It's we're basically building really uh, like next gen AI solutions regarding these domains that you talked about before. Mm-hmm. But funny enough, we purchased uh, Z.ai this week, and also what was the other one? Partner.ai, which is going to be an offset of Girlfriend, which we're going to be talking about later on. Interesting. So, is it a tech business? Is it a marketing business? Is it a like when we, you what is? We, we're basically sorry. We're literally we we bought loads of domains, and then we're we're going to be focused on each domain individually. So right now, I'm working on Art.ai, okay. which is the social media platform for AI artists. So, literally, what that is a uh, anyone who's an AI creator for sound, music, 3D, anything which is artificial, there's going to be a social media platform for them, which is a it's a bit of a hybrid between Instagram mixed with Patreon and Shutterstock. So if you're great at writing prompts for images, you no know, people will be able to pay for eventually with time to download your image, use it professionally for TV, print, where you name it, and also earn a living with it as well. Interesting. So true story, Vince. You're one of our you're one of Keith and Nicole's first morning show guests, mutual guests together. So we're doing some of our first interviewing together. So we're learning on the air together how to do this together. So building in public. Nicole, I'm going to throw to you along the way here. Is you? You're, I'm sure you're going to ask some questions for for Vince along the way as well. So Nicole, queuing you up. Anything to anything for Vince right now? Uh, no, I'm just interested in like your story, how you got into this. Like that always interests me. How people get to what they're doing. Yeah, literally, it all started with Andy Booth, who you're going to meet later on. He's my business partner, and he's got a background in domains. So he's one of the top ten percent of domainers in the world, where he would buy domains and normally flip them. And now because of the rise of AI, I was I sold all my other businesses and we knew each other through friends. And then we just basically got talking one day and he was like, I want to, instead of buying domains and selling them, I want to now build businesses. So I told him about my background, which I've got close to 20 years of being self-employed, building up businesses from scratch, digital and also tangible. And it was just a perfect timing because I, was, I sold all my businesses in Spain and I was ready for the next big project. And I was obviously, I've always been studying with AI and tech i'm a big nerd to be fair i'm a developer as well mm-hmm. and uh, yeah the stars just aligned and he was like yeah i've just bought home.ai i've bought all these other domains and i was like can you do something with it and i was like yeah and so my job right now as ceo is it's like we're a very new uh, company we've only got formed in january so mm-hmm. i'm building the teams to actually build each of the ips so the first one was art we've already it's already been built it's already been designed it should be uh in closed beta in a month or so but the new project, which is girlfriend.ia, is what's getting a lot of attention. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. And uh, the story with girlfriend is quite funny, actually, is I watched her, the movie. I don't know if you guys watched the movie. Mm-hmm. It's about 11 years old. It's it's quite an old movie. It won a few awards. And uh, it's about a guy that falls in love with an operating system, which is AI. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I, I had this idea, did some loads of research. I went to Andy and I said, no. We need girlfriend. We need girlfriend. And I was telling him about the idea. And then one day, I think it was probably about a month or so ago, he watched a movie and he was like, I'm hooked. There's a big market for this. He did a load of research on it. Mm-hmm. Can you build it? And I was like, yeah. So my job now is to run with it. And I'm speaking with a lot of AI professionals. So I'm not an AI expert myself, but I do have an understanding of the whole thing. So I, I'm networked with Andy Pardo. He's been in machine learning for 30 years. So if I have any ideas, I just run it through him and he just says yes or no if we can actually build it or not. So it's all about using the, the tech which is available today mm-hmm. and then developing on top of it. So Vincent, what will somebody get from you? What will they receive from you when they With get girlfriend. a girlfriend? Yes. What will they get when they get a girlfriend.ai, a girlfriend from Vincent and Andy from Cognitive? What are they going to receive from you? 
there's going to be an onboarding phase. So obviously we need to know about the, the guy. So we're going to aim it just for guys to start with. And then we're going to move eventually once we've written the right model and it's working great, then we'll reverse it for the opposite sex or whatever you're into, basically. But basically the onboarding phase. So it'd be like, you no, know, the girl needs to know about you. So how old are you? What are you into? No, what's your height? What's your weight? Just to get a, a, a fingerprint of the user. And then based on that, we've got we're training like an LLM, local LLM, with like professionals like dating coaches, relationship coaches, to really polish this LLM, which is a large language model, mm -hmm. to give the right advice as if you were paying for a, a, a therapist, for example. So Nicole, could you see yourself thinking about a boyfriend.ai? Is that next up, Vincent? It's going to be partner.ai. We bought that domain this week because we've realized. We're sitting on a gold mine regarding girlfriend, and a lot of the podcasts that I've been on, they've been they asked me the same question, like, why are you not dealing with the opposite set, like for girls to find guys or the LGP uh, community, know what they want to do. So literally, uh, yeah, we bought it this week, Partner.ai, to then solve that issue, and with hopefully with time with this, because it's going to be it's going to be a long process, and the most important thing is data, because yeah. we can, as a company with the AI, give you a direct like agenda to do something because therapists can't do that as well we can't tell you to go to a bar or go to a dating night no you have to do it yourself we can assist you but we can't be a direct approach and it's really important is because we we have no control of the ai and this is why we need to obviously polish it to make sure it's giving good advice because one day imagine if she said jump off a building or jump off a cliff and someone did it obviously it's going to be uh, a lot of legal issues coming our way yeah so is what you're is what you're getting, Vincent? Are you getting a bot? Am I getting like a girlfriend.ai bot? Am I being linked to a bunch of other companies that are selling these chat bots? No, no. We, we, the market right now, what we've done research on, is is very primitive in terms of bots. It's very sexual. It's very mm -hmm. seedy. It's all about sending nudity, and and this is not what we want with girlfriend.ai. And this is what we've told everyone is like we, we're not even going to give the girlfriend a picture. No, it's up to you to imagine, you know, if you've been on a phone call with someone that you've never met and you've got an idea of how they look in your head, this is mm -hmm. what we want to do is drive the realism regarding the girlfriend. And there's going to be uh, many ways you can interact. So the first way is obviously through text. So we're going to build an iOS and Android app as if it was like an iMessage app, for example, or a WhatsApp message app where she can text, you can react to her, you can speak back to her. But the secret sauce and all of this with the technology is that you'll be able to actually give her a call in real time and you'll be able to speak to her in real time and she will appear human. It's going to be very different, difficult to actually feel like you're actually thought she's going to have emotions. She's going to, she's, she's going to burp down the phone or if, she, if she's outside, you're going to hear birds whistling. If she's at a nightclub, you'll hear music in the background. There's going to be a realism aspect to all of this. And Yes, it is interesting. It is interesting. So I can see Nicole just processing this right now. <laughs> so it's funny. So Vincent, I got to share with you and continue to share with Business Athlete Nation here is, is you're all getting to see the Regis and Kelly come to y'all in the mornings here. Keith and Nicole met on, on, on my original show here. And one of, my, one of my clips in that show in the morning is asking Nicole if she's ever built an AI of herself. And we had just met and she looked at me quizzically like, not really. And I'm like, yeah, it's interesting because I have done it, Vincent. I, I've taken a bunch of my knowledge, which was, so it, was, it, it didn't take me very long to build the AI because I just used my knowledge. It took like actually eight seconds. It took eight pages of knowledge and I was done. It was like, okay, instant knowledge from Uncle Keith over there. Eight pages of knowledge, boom, smart guy. All, all joking aside, is that what you're doing? Is you collective? Not, not really. I think what you're talking about, there's a company called personal.ai who just yeah. re received loads of funding. Yeah. That's Yes. And the main thing with these guys, and I've studied them and stuff, and the onboarding process, you have to feed it a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So like what you said, you had to feed it you no know, information about yourself, where that's a bit of a difficult thing if you're just a normal person, if you're not a businessman. Now, how do you feed this this? about well, personal AI, your, your de details you know, and stuff. So with us, it's all going to be voice-based or text-based. So we're going to ask you the questions as if it was like a real therapist speaking to you. So how are you feeling today? No, I'm feeling down. Okay, that's fine. Why are you feeling down? So then we, the, the user is feeding the data based in a natural conversation with the AI bot. 
Mm. Mm. Nicole. I'm just, yeah, trying to take, take imagine. It yeah. <laughs> is it going to be an app on, on, on one's phone, Vincent? Is it going to yes, be? Yeah, yeah. That, we're not going to be web. It's going to be iOS and Android. Okay, so it'll be an app and, on my phone, and it'll yeah. be and it will be branded girlfriend, my girlfriend. AI, yeah, it'll be girlfriend.ai, and it'll also be partner.ai when we eventually build that. So, for example, if uh, you've got the onboarding process you know, mm-hmm. with her, she wants to know about you and stuff like that. And we've got like a list of over 500 questions what was selected for us to try and understand about the the guy in question, you know, like. How do they think? You know, what is the mental health of their user? You know, why have they not got a girlfriend? Because the whole goal of this application is to help men build up confidence, become a better person, to find a girlfriend. We're not a girlfriend replacement. We're, we're there to be the friendly girl saying, you know, go on, you know, go to the gym. You know, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna not regret this, or maybe go on a you no know, date night, you no know, you know, blind date or whatever. It gives the advice. And even if you're at a bar and you see a girl that you like and you're panicking, you can call her up and go, look, there's a girl here that I really like. How do I approach her? And she will give you based on the experts that we're using, it will give you the confidence to go up and go and actually converse with another girl. <laughs> Did you say that it'll also tell you what you're not doing very well? Yes, uh, yeah, like, yeah. So, 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 what so, not, so what you're not good at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we're going to profile. So um, imagine like a video game, like with GTA, yeah. you got like speed, stamina. Yeah. We're going to have the same in terms of if you're romantic or not. Because we'll ask the user questions. So, what would you do in this situation with a girl? And then we'll realize that, let's say, this guy in question has no romance, romantic charms whatsoever. We can see that as a weakness, but then we can actually start training in the, the guy in a natural way. Like, you no, know, when you do meet a girl, you no, know, maybe buy buy some flowers or compliment her or do this and that, just to make you know to help men you know go out there and actually become a better person with it as well. But not well, okay. To- so yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Helping you get to the stage of getting a girlfriend. It's not meant to be like. No, that's the thing, and because. Right now in the market, the girl, the AI girlfriends that you got, it's the opposite. It's a case yeah. of trying to trap you in with a monthly subscription and then you know, sending you nudity, sending you pictures, and it's all artificial to try and hook you into it. Yeah. We want to be more of a friendship, like a counselor, that someone that the, the, the more you speak with her, the more she'll know about you because she's going to she's gonna have long-term memory, which a lot of these bots don't have. So what you said two or three months ago in the system, she'll be able to remember and actually speak to you about it as well. So it's like having a companion, like a friend, just to give you a friendly nudge. No, no. If, let's say if you're overweight and you've not had a girlfriend in 10, 15 years, she will tell you, like, maybe go to the gym. No, look after right. yourself because no, you'd be more attractive. No, or maybe you're not looking after yourself in terms of you, like, no, no, with your hair or if you've got a, like an overgrown beard. No, just little techniques. What uh, and this is what we're going to get from the experts in the field as well for like relationship coaches and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's not what I thought of, like, when I first heard it. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) So me neither, but isn't that... So it's interesting, Nicole, because you said that. I said that in my head when I first looked at it. My my wife said the same thing. Even you admitted, Vincent, that people are thinking of it differently. Is that not a... Is that not a challenge in how you're bringing this to market or how you're positioning this on market? Are people not coming in thinking that you're... NSFW not safe for work when in reality exactly you are exactly yeah is that why you're on this trying to trying to change perceptions no we're just building hype right now with what we're building because what we've built what we've got so far is very magical and it's just because of the name it's not like we're uh, another generic name in terms of with uh, girlfriend we have girlfriend.ai and we want to obviously with this create a positive no, we, we believe in like ethical practices with AI as well, because we don't want to suck somebody in and give them an artificial girlfriend that they don't want to go out anymore and converse with other people. We want to push people to actually bet themselves as well. And like I said, no, nothing sexual, nothing CD. And the aim with this is that let's say that a user uses our application for six months and eventually they do find a girlfriend. It's not going to be a case of, right, see you later. We've done our job. We're going to evolve it to be like, okay, your girlfriend, we're going to now be a relationship coach to help you understand your girlfriend and how to be a better boyfriend or partner for the user as well. So it evolves with time and it goes over the whole spectrum. So let's say if your girlfriend's mad at you and you don't know what you've done wrong, which is a common thing for us men, like what what did they do wrong? 
she, the AI girlfriend, will understand and she'll be basically tell you ways of how you can like, then maybe she's had a bad day at work. Have you asked her how she is? Maybe she's on a period. Maybe you need to just step away. All these little things which men don't really understand and take seriously, especially through empathy as well. It's going to be evolving into that type of a service as well. Hmm, that's interesting. It's uh, it's certainly an interesting approach. I And again, I wonder aloud in listening to you speak that if the challenge is not trying to change people. Like I thought of services like, oh, I had it on my mind, Ashley Madison, right? Those paid services that's, that, that suck you in to then have you communicate with the bot and have you, your job is to get me as a man to get sucked in and then have me pay you to communicate with you all the time. But that's not what this is. No, not at all. Right now, we're very early in terms of the SaaS model we're going to do, but we're aiming at maybe a, a totally free of charge. Because the more users that use our platform through text, the more we can train the model to become better and better. It's the same with GPT that if you don't pay for it, what you type is being trained by the model to make it better. And with the premium, obviously you get the better model and you get you know, faster responses and stuff like that. So our aim with this is to be free of charge, hopefully train the model to get it perfect and then offer like a premium tier where we can say, look, if you want to give her a call, you know, it is a paid feature because the tech that we're using right now is very next gen. And it, the most important thing with this is latency. So to the speed of the conversation with most chatbots right now, when you speak to them, you have to wait like 10, 15 seconds for a response and that destroys the realism. So if we're doing this in real time, we need very beefy hardware and it's very expensive. And obviously if people want to use this feature, it's going to have to be a paid feature. Hmm. What do you see at five years from now? Partner moving on as like a relationship coach no it's going to go the whole the whole like i said the whole spectrum and then with partner and the idea is that the more you speak with the ai model the more she understands you so it'll get to a point where she'll know more about you than you know about yourself and this is where the data privacy is so important with us as well we're not going to sell the data we're not going to allow anyone to use this data it's going to be encrypted no the only person who can read your data is the ai girlfriend and she's not going to talk about you to other guys who are on the system as well. So the idea is that with the partner.ai, if we're fingerprinting, let's say, on girlfriend and then on partner, we find a girl based in, let's say, Barcelona, who's who you map with our algorithms to actually match up. She's looking for a boyfriend. She's into what you're into. She's into everything that you believe in. Now, you guys are a perfect match. Then we will go, look. Meet this girl. No, she, she's into what you are. Like you're a ninety percent match. She's based in Barcelona. Here's her information. Do you want to meet her? Yes or no? And then the bot will allow them to actually meet up. And the great thing about this is because it's not just like a dating site where you can lie. You can go on Tinder and say whatever you like. It takes time to build your your digital image of what you're going to have on the system. So if you lie about something, we're going to ask that same question in a, say in a mum's time ask you the same question but in a, in a different way to see if it stays consistent and if it stays consistent we know it's a truthful answer so i so can somebody create a complete digital persona of themselves on the system because you said no, no no it's not going to work like that it's more of a fingerprint for the ai girl to, girlfriend to understand the user so when you're saying to me that i can if i give you information let me give you like, hey, my birthday my birthday is x date that, that that is something I'm telling you as my AI girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to ask me that question throughout our relationship together to make sure that it's me. Yeah, basically, we're just going to, uh, it's all about reinforcement learning. Okay, yes. So what you say today is you can change. You can say I'm into Latinos now, but then in a month I'm into Asian girls. Mm -hmm. So we understand that this changes, but we need reinforcement questions. So if we're asking a serious question about a user, and then we ask them again in a month, if it's the same, we know that they're being truthful. If it's been, we ask the same again, a question in three months and they reply the same, we know they're telling them the truth. And this is the biggest problem when it comes down to dating is that a lot of people do lie just to try and get at the top of the food chain. With this, we know when people are being sincere or when they're, when they're lying, basically. What do you say to the skeptics? What do you say to somebody saying, "Ma, well, Vincent, or... You're a marketing capture. You're a data capture business. You are somebody who's building, and not wrong. We're about grace here in the lab. We're about asking great, honest questions, having good dialogue. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to somebody who goes to the site, looks that it's really just a 
paragraph, give me your email address. Not really sure what it's all about. Might seem a little curious to me. Allow me to present the not so glorious side of what maybe this is. And the, the, well, the, the skeptic side, if I may, Vincent. Yeah, no, not at all. It's like we've appeared the podcasts we've had before where the, the guys are going, wow, this sounds amazing, where the girls are going, is this a replacement for me? And like I said, we're not a replacement girlfriend. We're more of a, a replacement coach. Way. Yeah, I don't see it that way so much, Vincent. So AI has their coaches. The, the idea of an AI bot isn't really new. It's in the market today. I'm trying to understand where you come in today that's different than everybody else. And, and, and is what you're really doing grabbing a spot in the market from a search perspective, from a data capture perspective, from a marketing perspective, because you're saying to anybody like, like my, like anybody who's searching, if you guys know how, obviously you guys are smart digital marketers, clearly by, by what you're doing, I can see it. I think it's brilliant. Is, is that what the business really is, is gathering people to then link them with other people selling the services or no. you not at all, not at all with that. No, it's like I said, the data we capture is hundred hmm. percent. No, it's going to be encrypted. No, even if we get hacked, or this was a question we had in the last podcast. We, let's say we had 10,000 men on there and then someone stole that data. They're not going to be able to piece the data because one, we're encrypting it. And two, it's going to be on a vector database, which is like a three dimensional database where the, only the AI knows how to communicate with that data. So, in, but with the data we have, we're definitely not going to be, you know, selling it to sponsors and stuff like that. But maybe in the future, maybe if there was a, a paid, no, sorry, a free tier where no one's paying, we could have sponsored ads. So we know that our users, you know, into say, you don't go to a gym, but then the local gym in Barcelona is looking for people. They can say, look, do you want to try and suggest for to guys, you know, to join a gym and use this coupon code? We may explore that later on. No, with sponsorship, especially with the, the free tier, because the hardware that we're actually paying for right now is very expensive. That was going to be my next question, is that building in the AI space is not inexpensive, especially if you're doing it yourself. So you're funding it somehow. Is it self-funded? Is it Self-funded, yeah. Self-funded. Self and I'm going to bring on Andy later on. He's, a, he's a, the reason why we're here today is, is because of him. Basically. Okay, okay. So before we bring Andy in, maybe you can talk to Nicole and I a little bit about cognitive.ai. So when I look at the yeah. site again, when we introduced you, you've got a bunch of different, which is why I'm curious about the whole thing. Because it, if I'm looking at the old search world of 20 years ago, dating myself, Nicole Bernard, and, and you sit in those, you guys say you're dom you, you were domain purchasers and you would buy and sell domains looking at the model you have in front of you right now is you've bought some very strategic dot AI domains, mm -hmm. right? which means you can do some real strategic things underneath those dot AI domains, right? Which exactly. is why I come at this from a really curious perspective. Tell me more about cognitive AI and the rest of the domains that you guys own and where you go after girlfriend. AI. Well, after girlfriend, I think we're going to move over to sound AI. And because okay. right now we, we see that there's a big market for sound. So, Another example, we can generate a lyric. So let's say if you want to talk about your girlfriend or wife, no, we can generate the lyrics with LLM. It's pretty basic. But then maybe with time, we'll be able to create a song or you know, a full-on three-minute audio clip, which sounds professional you know, with the drums, guitar, you name it, on there as well. So with regarding the other IPs, we've got the basic ideas, but the thing is we, we haven't got a business plan for them right now. We're, good, we're basically focused right now on art.ai and also girlfriend.ai. Once I've once we've hit past obviously the documentation in terms of business plans and got the right stuff in, in order, then we'll decide to move on to the next one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I think there's a big market with real estate, for example, and especially with an LLM. This is where it's big money because obviously if you're directing people to find houses, you know, the commission on housing is a big market and if you make this into a worldwide model where anyone from around the world you know we you feed the data to us what you're looking for for example it knows that you've got two or three children so you straight away it's going to look for a school in the area that you're looking for and it will go behind the scenes search through all the apis and then come back and go here's two or three houses that are you no know, what based on our uh, algorithm is perfect for you you can afford them it's close to schools, it's in the area that you want. So it saves like hours and hours of researching through different platforms. Mm -hmm. But like I said, 
This is just a base idea that we're, we're talking about regarding the real estate. Almost like a search engine, it seems, doesn't it, Nicole? Yeah, I was thinking Zillow. I was like, I like that. We we'll just replace well, it. Well, for example, Zillow has an API. We could tap into Zillow and then feed the data through there. And then it's, it's the, the technology is there. It's just building the LLM uh, to replace Google. And that's what the challenge is. Because right. right now, Google is dominating the space. It has been for the last 20 years or so. So with LLMs and especially with AI, this is when you're going to see the paradigm shift where people are not going to be using Google as much anymore and start using uh, AI to, for the searches. For example, I don't mm -hmm. use Google now. I use an app called Perplexity. I don't know if you guys have used it before. Yeah, I use it all the time, yeah. Yeah, I exactly. It's before. like it's from Keith. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, and it's an amazing application. It's, for example, last weekend on Saturday, I typed in, did any live events happening in Barcelona? And it just went, here's a live, live, live events for Saturday. And it's saves me having to go to Google, going to Eventbrite, go to Meetup, all that type of stuff. It just gives you all the information that you want without hitting Google. Yeah. And isn't Google, this is totally off topic, but aren't they like putting AI into their search though? So would that? Yeah, they've got, they've got Gemini, which is uh, the evolution from BARD. And because yeah. everyone's re rephrasing their, their AI models right now. So like with uh, Microsoft as well, it moved, I can't remember the old name of it, but they moved to Copilot as a main uh, name for AI. Yeah. And with Google, especially with uh, Gemini, it seems that Apple are interested in actually using Gemini's AI functionalities for the next iPhones and stuff. Hmm. Crazy. Because imagine Siri with, with AI. Right mm -hmm. now, she's not very intelligent. No, she can't really do that much. But if Siri was basically there to ask, you can ask it any question and it feels realistic as well. This is where they're going regarding that. And this is why we're with us regarding girlfriend. We want to capitalize on that before it comes mainstream because there's no one really concentrating on this level where we're there to help users. Yeah. And is it live yet? Is, can people start? No, we're, we're, we're still very early planning with the AI professor and also with the AI developers. We basically, I've done all the research in terms of what tech is available because the tech is the most important thing. And the biggest thing with this tech is the audio calling functionality. And latency is a really big thing because obviously if you speak to the AI girlfriend and it takes 10 or 15 seconds to respond, you, you lose that, uh, that connection. Right. Isn't cheap. Yeah, no, I'm not, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Do y'all have a launch date that you guys are shooting for or? Well, what we're going to do is if you look on the website, girlfriend.ai, we were having like an early adoption, like, so you can go in there, uh, put your name and email on there. And what we'll do is that we're going to have a closed beta. So before we leash, launch it to the public, we're going to allow you know, a certain amount of people to come on a profile and say, look, it's early on. There's going to be mm -hmm. bugs. There's going to be problems. We need you to report them and then polish it. Because it's all about people. The more people using the platform, the more it's going to polish the actual uh, AI model. Yeah. And then once we get it, to, and the biggest part with that is that once we've got it to a part where we've trained the model correctly, it's giving ninety percent accuracy in terms of uh, what it's feeding back to the users. Then we're going to move over to the the, the voice capabilities. How how have people? How's the sign-up process going? And the second part of that question for me is, again, allow me to keep asking perhaps some of the, I want to come at this from the skeptical end, somebody listening to this. No worries. You're, a you're asking me for my email address. You're asking me for a lot. And I don't know really what I'm getting yet. Are people drinking the Kool-Aid and saying, yes, tell me more? Or are people going, mm, I'm not sure just yet, Vincent? We've got quite a lot of people signed up already. Yeah. And girlfriend ready for it. And it's mainly because of speaking with you on podcasts is I'll be spreading the word about what we are because without knowing what the website's about, a lot of people are skeptical of what are you an AI replacement as a girlfriend, which is not very ethical to be fair, because especially after COVID, a lot of people went through a lot of mental health issues and stuff like that, especially with communication. We want to be that person where we can actually say, we're going to help you get back on your feet and build up confidence and actually do that. So the domain name, yes, a lot of people are actually skeptical about it. And then this is why we've got partner.ai, which will be all you know, for everyone, basically. Hmm. Interesting. Why don't we, so before we go, why don't we, why don't we pause for a moment and bring Andy on for the last segment of the show, Vincent, and we'll introduce Andy Booth and have bring him to the table, talk about Andy and continue introducing the audience to Cognitive.ai, Girlfriend.ai, Vincent Valentine, and all the great things you guys are doing uh, with helping yeah. people 
with maybe their relationship issues, starting with men looking for girlfriends. Exactly. I'll bring Andy on in a few minutes. Awesome. So let's do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring us off stage, hit a one-minute break, and we'll be back in a minute, okay, gang? Awesome. awesome. Hang tight. Boom, boom. All right. What's going on? Keith Pillis, Vincent Valentine, Nicole Bernard, joining everybody back here. Morning's in the lab. Morning here in North America, waking up with the gang across LinkedIn, X, YouTube, Instagram, where else are we? We're across Facebook. We're anywhere you can stream this show. We are streaming across the planet. And every single day, Business Athlete Nation, more of you show up. So I thank you for that. I thank you for the behind the scenes comments. Nicole was at a hockey game last night. So I was like, hey, can I get your autograph? Are you a celebrity? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, I heard your show in the morning. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. We think you and Nicole are great. I'm like, oh, good. Then tune in again tomorrow. <laughs> It is awesome. It's been a lot of fun. So we're joined uh, with with Andy Booth, Vincent Valentine from Cognitive.ai, Talking Girlfriend.ai. I think my voice is breaking up. Andy, what's shaking, my friend? How's it going, guys? Apologies, I've not got a very good right ear. So maybe some uh, artificial intelligence could help. <laughs> all good, all good. So tell us a little bit about yourself, about Cognitive, and, and what was the inspiration for partnering up with Vincent to get this project off the ground? Absolutely, absolutely. For me, the AI revolution was hard to avoid. It was a lot of videos on YouTube that I was starting to see spring up. But it's just been a, a concept in science fiction for such a long time. And I think with the advent of ChatGPT and all of that, people are starting to wake up to it. And even though it's been forecast in many a movie, and we all know where this is going, this is the uh, 2023 and, and 2024 is really the year for everybody where it's, we got to get going, but we've got to start making a statement here. Yeah, that was really where Cognitive was born. Yeah, and, and it just so happened I could buy the domain name with my background in digital assets. Mm -hmm. I could not really, like I really like Cognitive. And it also makes you look smarter than you are. Well, <laughs> wait, I've been using good lighting to make me look younger than I am. I've been using AI tools to look smarter than I am. I've been hiring smarter, not hiring. I've been partnering and collaborating with smarter people than I am with Nicole. So I get you, Andy. I'm all about to bring in smarter people around you, right? And if you have those domains in front of you, go and grab them. But I got to be honest, as I was saying to Vincent, and, and I, again, I come with this from a quizzical, curious point of view. You've done a wonderful job as a digital marketer acquiring those very smart dot ai assets you've made what's the nation and antigua is it yeah the dot ai nation that's right you're, you're, anguilla, you're, anguilla. you're making anguilla some cash there gentlemen oh, definitely I am. Definitely. I better be, i've not been invited to any of their parties but Damn. i believe they're building a new hq i think you guys should be getting you're single-handedly increasing the gdp of anguilla with with your purchasing of your ai domains if I don't get a statue, I at least want a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned getting in now. Like you're like, we got to get in now. Things are moving fast. You've been a digital marketer, Vincent, Andy, you, Andy, for a long time. So when you look 12 months from now, because me, I'm the same way. I, I, I was telling Nicole last night, I was driving out to my son's hockey game and my brain's moving fast these days because it seems like AI is moving so fast and 12 months from now seems even faster, doesn't it, Vin, Andy? Oh, hell yeah. You just can't predict the rate of growth. 12 months from now, I can't tell you if we're, we're going to be here. <laughs> I don't mean to scare anyone, but um, it's moving rapid. And I think that was reflected uh, with what Elon Musk had to say. I'm not sure if you saw that video going around Twitter. But uh, yeah, like any day things could change because that's the rate. That's an exponential kind of curve. So We've got our work cut out because every single day is a new challenge. Yeah. In the cognitive office. <laughs> when you see your business 12 months from now, what do you see? Good question. Good question. Yeah. As long as we can adapt to trends and keep pace with them and provide people what they want, I think you're going to see in 12 months more and more people adopt in AI. And it's just going to become like an intrinsic part of society. Like, I don't think traditional dating advice and things like that are really going to be as valid anymore. It's just going to naturally evolve very quickly. And I think something like this, like a partner AI, could really help people out. It just, if you've got a girlfriend, you're screwed, or you've got a boyfriend because you've got a competition. 
thanks to us. And the idea behind this, of course, as Vinny's mentioned, is just to get people confident, build that connection that computer nerds struggle with. I've been one my whole life, so I know what it's all about. I, I've been through those bouts of anxiety attacks, just going out in public. But here I am, man, as, as a new mechanical me. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. You're, do, you're, you're, do, you're doing great. An anticipated launch date? We were talking to Vincent about when's the anticipated launch of, of Girlfriend.ai? I would say give it between three to six months. We don't want to release a product which is you know, giving bad advice. So the more we polish it, the, the more beta testers we get onto the platform, the more we feed it data in terms of from the user and then using the um, the experts to actually come in and then tell us where we're going wrong and right. It's all about this polishing. And then once we're at a stage where it is you know, for public, then we'll introduce it to as like an open beta to the public. But we're expert. But I'll say that between three and six months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, there has been a race as of late. So if you look at 23 to now over the last 15 months, we've been introduced to very much the software side of AI, Cloud, GPT, Copilot, Gemini. But recently with, Jan, with, with Jansen from NVIDIA and, and Elon and, and the gang, humanoid robots and hardware are, are quickly becoming center stage in, in the AI revolution. We're talking as much about hardware as we are talking about software and, and the backbones underneath it all. Do, do you see girlfriend.ai, do you see girlfriend eventually being part of a hardware solution where I'm actually getting a humanoid robot that is underlying by, no, I'm serious, man. I'm just like, I'm laughing because it's true. <laughs> How is it not? Yeah, look, hey, you've just got to, you got to converge to what the audience are asking for. Right? Like if they're asking, you got to provide. So uh, let's not, let's not necessarily go there in the conversation. Like in the, let's keep this in terms of the end for work, the normalness. Why? How is it not unreasonable to think that if we're going to create humanoid robots to do technical tasks and other tasks that they don't inevitably become companions for us as regular humans? And there's oh, going yeah, to be, need yeah. to be some kind of underlying well, software architecture for that. And is that not what you're ultimately building? Have you seen the movie Megan? Yes, I have. <laughs> That's why. We should stay away from that. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. I know regarding the ro robotics, a, a lot of the uh, use cases right now is for the elderly or who are lonely. So mm -hmm. for, for someone to sit down with them and speak to them and stuff like that. I think that's great in terms mm -hmm. of this, but regarding having a, a mechanical girlfriend, it goes against our principles. We don't want them to replace their girlfriend with a robotic girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We want them to meet a real human uh, girlfriend. And this is why I was laughing before with it because it's, uh, I think it was uh, in January, the CES. Yes. There was a lot of adult toys around yes, AI being yes. announced. Yes. And that's why I was laughing because it used to, could you have to imagine an AI girlfriend with sexual mm -hmm. target mm -hmm. parts, which mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think we want to go there to be fair. Right. <clears throat> But I think it's good that we're working towards ending the conversation here, gentlemen and Nicole, because again, the way that Nicole and I came into this, that was the perception, right? And I think that is perhaps maybe a challenge that you, you will have along the journey is changing people's perception of what girlfriend.ai is. And I hope that as the audience heard our dialogue today, Nicole, that people understand that no, it's not about to replace the girlfriend, it's about a companion for somebody to, help them improve their life and have alongside their girlfriend or with their girlfriend, but not replacing their girlfriend. Exactly. Yeah. Something I've got to speak on this. I think honestly, it's, we're moving away from a physical world anyway, but initially, of course, it's going to be a piece of software. You did you make a good point about the, the hardware and you've got companies like figure who mm -hmm. are working with Amazon and building factories and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's going to come into the, the realm of dating and things, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, unless we go the Blade Runner route. That really is it. It's, we've got, got two choices here. We either go more into the machine, which would suggest more of a simulation mm -hmm. as in, so living in your own virtual realities. Mm -hmm. or we remain in this physical world and it is again like a Blade Runner type scenario where you don't know if you're living with a human or a replicant which is a whole different set of uh, problems. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking more the soft way. I think cause we're going towards that world. I think it's less is more to a certain degree and in terms of these brands like empty vessel brands all you need is a simple clever idea for a 
complicated uh, problem. And that's what AI does. It's, it's an augmenter. And mm -hmm. I think that's where we come in. We've just got to get the right tools for it. And I think we've got the right guy for the job. Fantastic. <laughs> I hope anyway. I'm writing the checks. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> So we have Vincent Valentine and Andy Visa Booth. You got it. Yes, let me into the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Bernard, any final comments for uh, the gentleman before we say goodbye to Andy and Vincent? No, I just took a, a few notes of movies I need to watch, though. So, <laughs> Yeah, watch her. This is, a, her. this is a thing. Yeah, because for the first half of the movie, it's great because it's about a man who's just gone through a breakup from his wife. He's depressed and then... He installed, it's called an operating system in the movie. And then she, the girl, Samantha, who's voiced by Scarlett Johansson, she mm -hmm. basically helps him get out of his depression with yes. AI. Okay. But the trouble is he gets attached to her and he's, yeah, I'm, I'm over my ex-wife, I'm fine. And he's telling his friends that he's got a girlfriend and his girlfriend is the AI bot. But mm -hmm. without spoiling it too much, he gets to a point where everyone is using this AI bot as a partner, even if you're in a relationship because it will call you up in the morning and go, hey, beautiful, how's your day been? No, it will, it will call you at night time saying, mm -hmm. hope you had a great day at work, have a great sleep, you're going to uh, crush it tomorrow. It's all about uplifting people. Right. And from that movie, we're, we've seen the positives, but obviously the movie shows a bit of a darker edge to it where everyone's depending on this AI, but, and they don't want to date, and it gets a really bit, I'm not going to spoil it, but you need to watch it. It's quite yeah. an interesting movie. Okay, awesome. Awesome. All right, Vincent, Andy Booth, thanks for joining myself, Nicole Bernard, Mornings in the Lab. We're going to walk you guys out here and ask you guys to, I'm not ask you, we're saying goodbye. <laughs> we're having the guests on the show. So thanks for coming by, gentlemen. We'll see you again. We can find you guys at Cognitive.ai and Girlfriend.ai, correct? And soon Partner.ai. There you have it. Cognitive, yeah. Partner, and Girlfriend.ai. We got them all. We got them all. <laughs> awesome. Them awesome. All. Gentlemen, thanks Good luck, for guys. Good luck, gentlemen. Have a great day. Thank today. you for having us. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. Nicole, what did you think of that before we say goodbye to Business Athlete Nation? Oh, they're awesome. And I, yeah. I love that. I'm glad we had the conversation because, again, like you mentioned, just wasn't probably what I thought in mind. But I love that it's like a launching pad and helping people get to that yeah. point. So I think that what they're doing is amazing. Yeah, I agree because it is not what I thought it was. So I was mm -hmm. glad that we were able to give them the platform. That was, I hope, enlightening to the audience, informative to the audience, and maybe to the audience that, hey, listen, no, give us a second look. Head on over to Cognitive.ai. And listen, just again, let's just be clear because we're new to creating some of this content for Nation with these guests. No, this is non-paid. I was really curious. Keith and Nicole were curious about what Vincent and Andy were up to. So we invited them on the show. So we're not here to endorse anything, sell anything. We are here to entertain, inform, bring on interesting guests for you guys to make your own decisions with. But I invite you to check out Cognitive.ai, Girlfriend.ai, and so forth, where you can get more information from these guys. All right. Nicole, I'm going to get out of here. Maybe I'll go grab a nap. You should. Yeah, we'll see. It's so here's what's good for me. It's rest and recovery day on Wednesdays. So I, I went for my ride before I jumped in here because it makes me feel better. I got some yoga on the calendar. I might just sit back and do some reading before my show today at noon with Craig Thorne. We're talking beer, Nicole. Yes. I, I'm going to watch that one because I like beer. I know you like beer. That's awesome. <laughs> She's the ultimate business athlete. Beer, wine, running. With Nicole Bernard, Keith Billis, mornings in the lab. We will see you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Ciao. Awesome. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>